Anaconda, the movie where the snakes are big and the cringe is even bigger. Is it just me or does the jungle make you really, really horny? Oh no, I think it's the jungle. Th that's exactly what he said. Watch as Ice Cube struggles with basic English. Oh yeah, not every day my home girl from SC get to direct their own documentary. And John Voight puts on his best interpretation of Scarface. I post sarcastic movie videos damn near every week. So hey, if you like this kind of content, tenderize the like button and subscribe for more. This movie starts with Star Wars style scrolling text, so you know it's gonna be a good one. It opens with a shot of Danny Trejo, like we've never heard him before. That sounds absolutely nothing like Danny Trejo. His boat is attacked by an unknown entity. Danny Trejo decides to run from the cameraman and shoot at him. That's a good idea. If you're not on camera, then the movie can't kill you off. Trejo climbs as high as he can and figures that he might as well end his life faster than the movie can end his career. So now we're on to the real movie, following Terry Flores and a professor who looks a little too dirty to be sitting on someone else's couch. What happened to you? Oh, just a small attack of piranha. Terry's gather the crew, much like the Avengers, to film a documentary about one of the native tribes living along the Amazon River. The Shirishama tribe, one of the last great mysteries of the rainforest. Because what could possibly go wrong with a bunch of amateurs trying their hand at bootleg National Geographic? And oh look, Owen Wilson is in this movie. What a shot! This guy just blasted this thing, coming right at us. Playing as himself because he most certainly isn't acting. During their travel, the crew comes across someone a little late to Halloween. Thanks for that translation, Owen. Casper the Friendly Ghost, I mean, John Voight, needs a lift as he's having boat issues. Thank the Lord for you! Thank the Lord! But his boat isn't the only thing breaking down on him as his accent slips every couple of seconds. Maybe some other time. But I have two questions. How the hell did a 59-year-old John Voight clear this big-ass gap? And second, how does no one notice him making the I'm the villain of this movie face? Five whiskeys? That's breakfast on the river. No, no, John, that's alcohol poisoning. It is funny how he just ends up getting roasted by the documentary's narrator. What does a failed priest do in the jungle? Fail? Who says I fail? So, that night, the entire crew ends up getting high and dancing. <laughs> reggae music, ice cube, and a girl who can't dance? You see the picture they're trying to paint here. What are those, fireflies? Insect mating is apparently a major turn on for women, but we cut this scene short to show a panther getting stalked by the cameraman. How the fuck does a massive anaconda outmaneuver a fully alert panther on land? The next morning, the film narrator plays golf and misses every shot from five inches away. He blames Ice Cube's music and does the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a movie before. I can chip the hot, I'm a kid. He threatens to kill a man who is holding a knife right in front of him. Ice Cube could literally end his shit right now. You and who's army? Your mama's. We're gonna go out and get some wild sound. Yep, that's code for, there's a scene coming up. And John Voight looks a little too excited about that. But the cameraman is back with a vengeance. <laughs> hey, guess who happened to be right around the corner holding a rifle? I bet he was holding something else a few seconds ago. Wild boar. N no, John, that's a stuffed prop. Our humble narrator just enjoying the success that even a seven-year-old could achieve. The boat gets snagged on something, and the crew sends the professor to go fix it. I'm sure nothing will go wrong here. 
and proceeds to be KO'd for damn near the remainder of this movie, leaving John Voight free to totally perv out on his girl. After realizing that the tribe they're looking for built a beaver dam in the river, John reveals that he's been carrying dynamite this entire time. I'm talking about upsetting the ecological balance of this river. And Terry's main concern is upsetting the environment, not why the hell John Voight is carrying dynamite. And to blow up this wall, they send Owen Wilson, the sound guy. Absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. They literally almost killed themselves in the explosion because they're too damn close. Now their boat is covered in snakes. He was literally holding his single finger out in the open to get bitten. The crew spots a shipwreck off in the distance, getting out to scavenge fuel. After salvaging gear from the boat, the helmsman is attacked by the anaconda, just mere feet away from John and Ice Cube. They didn't hear a f***ing thing. John unravels a roll of snake skin he found on the boat, like it was a red carpet. Anacondas are a perfect killing machine. No, no, John. That's house cats. Google told me so. John insists that they catch the snake so they can earn a huge sum of money. But the crew just wants to get the hell out of there and bring the professor to the hospital. You know, let's film Sarone capturing a big snake. Well, almost everyone in the crew. Owen Wilson figured that Zoolander 2 wasn't a big enough paycheck and presents an Oscar-winning performance. You're in the middle of the jungle. You don't know shit about the shit we're in out here. Just like that, John pulls a gun and takes over the boat with Owen as his right-hand man, giving John yet another opportunity to perv out. You man gotta be crazy. Just let it go! They set the baited trap and managed to hook the anaconda. Owen jumps in to save his one-night stand who got knocked overboard. <laughs> They really did Owen Wilson like that. And the narrator says something that you can only understand with the subtitles enabled. Not your bloody poodle. And proceeds to thank John for slapping the bejesus out of him. Thank you. So Ice Cube and Terry come up with a plot to overthrow John so they can catch him off guard. Think I'm stupid! <laughs> They tie up John Voight, but not before getting their boat stuck yet again. Ice Cube, Terry, and the narrator jump in the water to unstuck themselves, leaving Owen Wilson's booty call on the boat alone with John Voight, who she blames for his death. Never look in the eyes of those you kill. This actually works. How the literal f He's 59 years old! The anaconda pops back up and eyes the narrator for his next meal. Well, at least he tried. John unties himself and attacks Ice Cube, as Terry totally doesn't shoot the man she has in her direct line of sight. But don't worry, the unconscious professor woke up and hits John in the back with a tranquilizer dart. Get up. <coughs> dart. How the f*** did he know it was a dart? He got punctured in the back. Oh, did you think the professor was gonna become an active character in this movie again? Think again. Ice Cube and Terry search an abandoned structure for more fuel. And guess who? I'm gonna kill you! Don't get me upset. He literally got injected with a tranquilizer dart meant for an oversized anaconda and fell into the river. How the hell is John Voight even still alive? And what kind of fake ass tranquilizer did he buy? Now, John plans to use Cube and Terry as bait, and John's magnificent plan includes catching the anaconda with a net. You gotta be fucking kidding me. And he just stands there looking at the anaconda instead of shooting it. Well, now he's snake food. Did, did he just wink? You, you know what? I'm not even gonna acknowledge that this just happened. Cube and Terry trap the anaconda in a facility and ignite the barrels of fuel. But this snake will still rather chase his prey than just diving underwater to avoid becoming barbecue. And now, magically, the professor is fully conscious and the native tribe they've spent the entire movie searching for finally shows their faces. These are probably the smartest people in the entire movie if you think about it. You can't get killed off if you're not even a character in the first place. Damn. I'll get to camp. 
you lost your narrator, your sound guy, and Owen Sidechick who was apparently the film director. Just what are you planning to film? This movie just gave me a brain aneurysm. And this is the ending to the movie. They just ride out into the sunset. By the way, this is immediately after saying, I'll get the camera. So, they didn't even stay to film the tribe. They literally started rolling the camera and dipped out of there. Totally worth it. So anyway, despite Anaconda giving me a couple headaches, I had a bit of fun with this. And if you made it to the end, tell me what you thought of the movie. I can keep covering killer animals, cringy ass, low budget monsters, whatever works. So, this is that guy, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Bye, have a great time.